Coal has been mined in Montana since the mid-1800s and was the primary source of fuel for everything from homes to power plants and trains. Today, Montana is left with 3,200 abandoned coal mines, many of them with a legacy of environmental problems. The Great Falls Coal Field in Cascade County, Montana has one of the state's premier coal deposits. There are over 200 mines with hundreds of miles of underground workings. This video focuses on the town of San Cooley, one of the county's many small towns impacted by historic coal mining. In its heyday, San Cooley was the host of eight coal mines. At the peak of nearly 60 years of operation, coal production exceeded 2,000 tons a day, leaving at least 600 miles of underground workings. Today, four of those mines discharge acid mine drainage, which pollutes waterways and groundwater. Historic mining records show metal will dissolve in days in the acidic mine water. In 1966, water samples revealed that Sand Coulee Creek had a pH of 3.3. What the residents of Sand Coulee wanted and needed was a plentiful supply of clean water. The abandoned mines dewatered the aquifer used by the community, resulting in decades of reoccurring and severe water shortages. In 2010, the Montana Abandoned Mine Lands Program began the Sand Coulee Water System Restoration Project. This award-winning project provided new fresh water wells, new water rights, a state-of-the-art pump house with a wireless management system, a 150,000 gallon storage tank, and a new distribution system with nearly two miles of new water mains, over 4,000 feet of new water service lines, and hookups to 80 homes. 22 fire hydrants were also installed, giving Sand Coulee residents a completely new level of fire protection. So I grew up on the edge of the Great Falls coal field, and when my brother and I were kids, we would ride our bikes out to Tracy and Centerville. Uh, little did we know we were riding across the Great Falls coal field. To us, they were just small farming communities tucked in these valleys outside of Great Falls, and we had no idea that the black railroad grade and the Orange Creek that ran through that community was due to the over 600 miles of underground coal workings in those communities. We moved to the, this well field here where we're standing. In 1959, they drilled two wells, a number one well and a number two well, into the Kootenai Aquifer. Uh, they were producing between 40 and 50 gallons a minute. And even in those days, they started to encrust, so they would lose water production, lose water production. Uh, they went, they couldn't find any piping at a reasonable rate, so they found some pipe in Belt, and I think that it come from the ACM company in Great Falls. It was about 125 thousandths, an eighth of an inch thick wall, four inch pipe, and it would fracture very easy. When it fractured, it would split on top of the pipe, sometimes up to 10, 12 feet, so you could not really see where the pipe was broke. Every time the pipe would break, the coal, all that real fine coal and silt and material would get inside the pipe and flush down. It just came to us, to our attention in March and February of 2010. Uh, the community was suffering significant water shortages uh, and they had, they had multiple problems. One was the uh, recurring water shortages where they were actually on well number four by the time we showed up. Um, they had, they had been hauling water, they had been purchasing water. They also had these thin wall water distribution lines that broke, that allowed coal waste to enter their water distribution system. And at the first public meeting we went to in March of 2010, one of the engineers was speaking, talking about options for the community. Uh, how will we afford a new tank? How will we afford new wells? How would we afford new pipes? And towards the end of his talk, he said, well, can I have a glass of water? And he got a glass of water and he drank half of it. And at the end of the meeting, he looked in the water and it had black floating coal in it. And it was apparent to us that this was a significant problem. And it was likely directly related to the abandoned mines. So it was a potential project for us. So we knew the Madison was about 400 feet down. Um, but we looked at well logs all around the uh, well field, and, we, and it looked bad. Um, more than half of them made less than 50 gallons per minute, and we knew we needed, we needed about 100 gallons per minute for the community. 
when we drilled the well, when we were done, when we, we, when we, when we made it as far as we could, which was 800 feet, uh, we were not sure we had a good well. And I just recall in June of 2012, when we first pump tested it, uh, we had hundreds of gallons per minute and we only had two feet of drawdown. And it was such a relief to, uh, to, to know that we had found water. We sampled, we, we, did a, we sampled the water, did an extensive uh, set of analyses uh, that you do for a public water supply system. The water quality is excellent and the water was there and it was a major milestone for the project. When we got the new system now, everything is spotless. It's clean, we have clean drinking water. People were changing the filters in their houses monthly because of the, all the coal and deposits and iron that was built up in their filters in their house and that way it would just clog the filter, they were replacing the filters. The response has been fantastic. And you have to think about what the community had been through. The community had been through 50 years of water shortages and 50 years of black particulate entering their water system. And what they had in 2010 was no obvious way out. I think the biggest benefit to uh, the work that the AML program has done in San Cooley is that now we've removed the contaminated water source, we've given them clean drinking water and fire hydrants. And so now I think San Cooley really has the potential to grow and become a desirable location for people to live.